Hey, I'm joined today by Dr. Joshua Wicks, a recent doctoral alumnus of the University of Toronto. Hey, Josh. Hey, Ted. How are you doing? I'm great. Well, I'm super excited about your nature paper, and that's what we're here to talk about. And I thought, Josh, I'd just uh, ask you to maybe take us through a little bit. Tell me a bit of the origin story and also, you know, the main science, the main achievements. Yeah, thank you. So this paper is about CO electroreduction to acetate, which can be used to form acetic acid. Acetic acid is a major precursor chemical for a variety of industrial processes with global production in the millions of tons per year. It has a significant carbon footprint because it is typically fossil derived in its industrial production today. And so we were interested to see how we could decarbonize this chemical pathway. From a scientific perspective, one of the biggest challenges in CO2 electroreduction and CO electroreduction is the selectivity of the reaction. With a lot of the catalysts that we use to produce multi-carbon chemicals, we get a, a wide range of products produced. Could be up to 10 different products being produced in a single reaction. And this has a lot of impacts in terms of downstream separation costs, the overall efficiency of the system. And so we were really interested to pursue maximum selectivity to a single C2 plus chemical. That's great, Josh. You, no, that's super. Thanks very much for taking us through the kind of applied motivation. I think it would be great to go next to the main idea. So as you say, it really critical priority to produce a single reduced carbon product from CO2, CO. And so, you know, what was the kind of design concept to make a significant advance in selectivity towards acetate? Exactly. So we started off by examining some of the proposed reaction pathways from our colleagues in the academic community who spent a lot of time thinking about reaction energetics and, and all the different combinations of intermediates and adsorbates that lead to a variety of different products. And we noticed that the configuration or orientation of the adsorbate on the catalyst surface, when we're in a multi-carbon adsorbate regime, can sort of take on two different modes. The first is a bindentate mode where two carbons are adsorbed to the surface, and you might have other oxygens or hydrogens joined to that adsorbate. And actually, a lot of the pathways do follow this scheme. And then the other mode is a monodentate adsorbate, where you still have two carbons in the adsorbate, but only one of those carbons is adsorbed to the surface. And so keeping this, these two sort of classes of adsorbates in mind, we noticed on prior proposed reaction pathways that the pathway to acetate or acetic acid follows almost exclusively along this monodentate pathway after the two carbons have coupled together. And so we started off with this idea in mind and thinking about how we can design a catalyst to force or constrain the adsorbates on the surface to form this monodentate adsorbate and then follow down a reaction pathway that uniquely leads towards acetate. Copper is widely used in multi-carbon production often provides a large mixture of coupled products, ethylene, ethanol, acetate, propanol. And so, and a lot of times in literature, we might alloy copper with other metals to tune the selectivity. But in most cases, copper is still the dominant metal, usually in greater than 50% concentration. But we, we never really see this extreme selectivity to acetate. And so, we thought that we could turn this on its head and, and go to the extreme. What happens if copper is in a very low concentration with a particularly chosen host metal? So with the hypothesis that I discussed previously, we identified five different potential host metals, silver, gold, palladium, platinum, and nickel. And so silver and gold are similar. They both have a generally a weak adsorption to CO. And then palladium, platinum, and nickel were sort of our counter examples. They typically have a stronger adsorption to CO. And so what we found was that silver and gold similarly had a preferential selectivity or in terms of reaction energetics 
towards acetate in comparison to the bidentate ethylene and ethanol pathway. And then in figure C, we then also compare this difference in reaction energetics to the CC coupling energetics as well. And we also see that the copper silver material shows beneficial or likely downhill COCO coupling to the OCCOH adsorbate. And on figure three, we then also probed the impact of CO surface coverage and copper cluster size. And so taking this sort of framework and then sort of sensitivity analysis around a variety of different variables in our electrolysis chemical environment, we then decided to synthesize the material experimentally. Thanks for explaining that, Joshua. Why don't we move along and talk a bit about the materials that you synthesized as a result and also how we sort of characterized to, to know exactly what we had and to check whether we were truly pursuing this, this hypothesis that you described. Yeah, so now using nanoparticles as our structure of interest, here nanoparticles around 50 to 100 nanometers in size. These nanoparticles are primarily silver in structure composition with roughly 1% copper doped inside in an even distribution throughout the material. We used a wide variety of characterization techniques, specifically advanced TEM measurement techniques led by colleagues at Northwestern University, Chao Bing Hu and Ganayak Dravid. And so we use these to identify you know, some of the exposed facets along the material, which were consistent with the facets that we were using in our density functional theory calculations, and as well to better assess the composition of the material therein. Great. Thanks, Josh. Well, let's talk a little bit more about some of the characterization. Can you summarize what were the key findings from the XAS studies? Yeah. So Jun Li was sort of our XAS lead in this project. Several other co-authors on the paper assisted him in experiments at several different synchrotron facilities around the world. And so in these experiments, we took our catalyst material, inserted it into an operando XAS cell, where we can probe the local atomic structure of our catalyst material before reaction, after reaction, and during reaction. And so in this, these figures here, we, get, we show a variety of different comparisons both while under an applied voltage. You know, this is a good chance to acknowledge the peer review process and the, the reviewers who were demanding. And, you know, maybe even at the time, I'm not sure uh, that we appreciated their feedback always, but I'm really proud of the work that you and the team did to get the 800 hours of stability in a very exciting system in terms of performance and at a pressure that I don't think too much electrochemistry has been done at. So, you know, I remember getting the reviews and, and thinking it would be great if we could figure out how to do this. It was a pretty high bar that we were asked to clear. And you and the team really just dove in and, and worked collaboratively to figure out how to do this. So congratulations. Thanks, Ben. Josh, in our last minute, I thought I might just ask a bit more about you. You completed a very successful PhD at the University of Toronto. You've got many other excellent papers in the broad area of CO2, CO electro reduction. Tell us a bit about your next steps. Yeah, thanks, Ted. Yeah, so I had a really enjoyable experience in Ted's research group at the University of Toronto. And since graduating, I've now started a position at a CO2 transformation or a company called 12. And there I work as a senior techno-economic analyst working at the interface of technology and business and helping them to guide company strategy using data and, and working very familiarly in a technology that, that I spent, you know, four and a half years researching. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited. Well, congratulations again on the paper. Congratulations on the job at 12. Congratulations to 12 on attracting you to their organization. It seems like a great fit and good luck with everything. Thank you. Thanks, Ted.